G'day folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. That's because over the past few months we've been riding a bunch of e-mountain bikes fitted with the latest Bosch Smart System. Now there have been some notable improvements with the Smart System compared to previous Bosch e-bikes, but there are also some lesser known features which we've been exploring in more detail. Most of you watching this will already know what the Bosch Smart System is, but if you don't, we've put an explanation into the full article which is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. We've also put a handy link in the video description below which will take you right there. Here, however, we'll be getting stuck straight into our top nine tuning tips to get the most out of your Bosch Smart System e-mountain bike. Number one is setting up the LED remote. Now this is a simple and easy one to do, though it's worth acknowledging how much nicer that LED remote is compared to the old Purion display. We've also found it to play much nicer with pretty much every dropper post lever we've tested it with. As well as being able to adjust the rotation on the handlebar, there's also a secondary bolt which allows you to adjust the lateral position of the remote. We like to set it up nice and close to the left hand grip. It's also worth noting that Bosch actually makes two different handlebar brackets, one of which is specific to the latest generation Shimano brake levers. And that means if you do upgrade the brakes on your e-mountain bike, it is possible to purchase a different mount through a Bosch dealer in order to get a nice and tidy fit. All right, number two, it's possible to remove the Kiox display entirely. Now this does differ to previous Bosch e-mountain bikes where the display was an integral part of the system. The Kiox 300 head unit, however, is just a screen. You can remove it and the motor still works. Now I personally quite like all the data it provides, though if you wanted a tidier cockpit, you could remove the head unit and the mount entirely. This means you'd be relying on the LED controller, though it still does provide basic information. It uses colored LEDs to display the current assist mode and also the battery status in 10% increments. It's pretty unobtrusive and it also uses an ambient light sensor which allows it to automatically adjust the brightness of the LEDs depending on the environment. Number three is to get updated with the e-bike flow app. Now the e-bike flow app is a big part of the Bosch smart system. It has an inbuilt mapping function, you can use it to record rides, and if you're that way inclined, you can mount your phone onto the handlebars and use it as a giant cycling computer. More importantly, the app is now your platform for over-the-air updates. Previously, you'd have to take your whole bike into the local shop and have it plugged into the Bosch-specific dealer software. With the smart system, however, you can now perform those updates at home through the app. There have been a bunch of updates and new features introduced lately, one of which is the e-bike lock function, which essentially turns your smartphone into a digital key, disabling the motor unless you and your phone are nearby. During the filming of this review, a new update rolled out that allows the Kiox 300 head unit to provide turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is something that hasn't been offered before. Bosch has also introduced a brand new auto riding mode, which automatically adjusts the support level in response to a drop in riding speed caused by a headwind or a sharp incline. So while you don't strictly need the app for your e-mountain bike to work, it is worth periodically checking the app for updates as we expect more improvements and new features will be rolled out in the near future. Number four, tuning the motor. Now where things get really interesting with the e-bike flow app is the ability to custom tune the motor's performance. There are four attributes that you can adjust. There's max power, acceleration, support level, and maximum riding speed. Now you can't adjust those levels in the Tour Plus or the EMTB modes because those are dynamic assist modes that automatically adjust the output based on the rider's input. You can tune the Eco and Turbo modes, however, which is useful if you're chasing a different support characteristic to suit your riding needs. For example, changing the acceleration and support levels makes quite a big difference to how quickly the power comes on. Now this is worth noting for lighter riders and those who are newer to e-mountain biking who might find the motor to be a little bit too full on in its stock settings. In this case, detuning the acceleration and support level is a great way to soften the overall output. Other riders might be looking for more of a workout, in which case detuning the motor and even restricting the maximum speed level is a great way to make sure that you're doing more of the work. Reducing that maximum speed could also be a useful function for parents who might not want their kids zooming around the bush at the full 25 k's an hour. 
In my case, I've got the motor tuned to the extreme. So in the eco mode, I've got the support level and the acceleration dialed down to minus five. Now this is all about maximizing range on longer rides by forcing you to ride a little bit slower and not lean on the motor so heavily. As for the turbo mode, I've got all the settings dialed up to the max. Now this is because I don't really use turbo mode when I'm riding on single track. When I'm on the trail, I'll typically always use that adaptive EMTB mode. But when I do want to use the turbo mode, which is when I'm riding through town on the way to the trails, I want to get the maximum support and acceleration possible for taking off from the traffic lines. It's also just really fun. Number five is the extended boost. Now, extended boost is one of the most impressive features of the latest Bosch smart system. It refers to how much the motor continues to supply power when you've stopped pedaling, which is also known as overrun. Now, extended boost is only found on the smart system drive units, and it's only applicable when you're using that EMTB mode. When you stop pedaling, the motor continues to provide support for an additional meter of riding, which is super useful on a technical climb when you might have to pause on the pedals in order to get up and over an obstacle. The downside of this overrun is that it can feel like the bike is trying to ride away from you. If you stop pedaling just as you come into a slow and relatively flat corner, the motor will continue driving forward, potentially pushing you wide and even off the trail. We've found it easy to adapt to, though lighter and less experienced riders can find it a bit overwhelming. Those riders have two options, one of which is to make use of the Tour Plus mode, which is still a dynamic assistance mode, albeit with less power and a less pronounced overrun. The other option is to take your e-bike into your local Bosch dealer and have the extended boost function disabled entirely. Now the catch here is that the motor's maximum power output will also be reduced from 85 to 75 newton meters, though that's likely to work well for those riders who are looking for a softer and less aggressive assistance in the first place. Number six, well let's talk about the walk assist and the hill hold function. Now previous Bosch e-bikes required you to press and hold two buttons in order to engage the walk mode, which was pretty awkward to do when you were pushing a heavy e-mountain bike up a slippery hillside. With the LED controller, however, you only need to press one button. From here, just let the bike roll backwards or start pushing it forwards, and the walk assist is automatically engaged, assisting you up to four kilometers an hour. Now, one of the newer updates via the e-bike flow app introduced a brand new function called hill hold. This is a bit like something you'd find on a modern four wheel drive, and it's designed to bridge the gap between using the walk assist and remounting the bike to ride. When you let go of the walk assist button, the motor will actually hold the bike in place momentarily. This makes it easier to remount the bike, though it's also useful if you're in a bit of a pickle on a steep and awkward climb, and you need to use the bike to physically pull yourself up or even off the side of the trail. It's not something we use all of the time, though with many e-bikes weighing around 25 kilos, you'll be glad you've got that hill hold function when you need it most. Number seven is cadence. Now, one of the most impressive aspects of the Bosch Performance Line CX motor is its ability to provide you power across a wide range of cadences. Regardless of gear choice, it has a remarkable amount of grunt when you need it. The downside is that it is easy to lean too much on the motor and continue riding in too high of a gear. This does have a negative effect on drivetrain durability, and it also places unnecessary strain on the motor's internals. You also reduce overall efficiency with the motor draining the battery quicker. Ideally, you want to pedal with a cadence of around 80 to 90 RPM. This will provide you with optimal support from the motor while maximizing efficiency and reducing load on your bike's drivetrain. A good idea is to display the live cadence reading on the Kiox 300 head unit. And there's also a nifty color-coded meter which will show you when you're in the optimal range. Number eight is battery health. Now, when we're talking about looking after your e-mountain bike, it's worth considering one of the most expensive components, which is the battery. As with all lithium-ion batteries, the cells inside the power tube battery are at their most stressed when they're either fully charged or fully discharged. With that in mind, Bosch recommends storing the battery with between 30 to 60% of its total charge, which is especially the case if you're not gonna be riding the bike for a while. The battery also doesn't love extreme temperatures. It generally prefers being stored at room temperature. So for Aussie riders like myself, who would normally leave their e-mountain bike in the shed over summer, it's worth removing the battery from the frame and storing it inside the house instead. And number nine, which is the wireless speed sensor. 
Now, if you've already removed the Keox head unit, but you want to tidy things up further, it is possible to upgrade to a wireless speed sensor. All current smart system enabled drive units like the Performance Line CX have a wireless speed sensor built directly into the motor's casing. This is designed to sync up to a magnet fitted to the valve stem so that the speed sensor can measure each wheel revolution. Now you need to purchase that magnet from a Bosch dealer and you'll also need them to configure the system to utilize that internal speed sensor. This will then allow you to remove the external speed sensor along with the wire and the rotor magnet leading to a tidier setup. Speaking of the speed sensor, if your e-bike uses 29 inch wheels but you want to change to a mullet setup, it is possible to change the wheel circumference in order to maintain an accurate speed measurement. Again, you'll have to do this through your local Bosch dealer, though it is cool to have that option for those who are experimenting with a mullet setup. And there you have it folks, our top nine tuning tips for getting the most out of your Bosch e-mountain bike. Now we do have a lot more to say about the Bosch Smart System. If you're keen to know what we like and don't like about the motor, battery and the user interface, make sure you check out the detailed review over at flowmountainbike.com. In there you'll see links to the various Smart System bikes we've tested, along with a discussion about some of the new features and future improvements we expect to see from Bosch in 2023 and beyond. Hit the link in the video description below to check it out. If you've got any questions for me, drop those into the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time. Toodaloo.